All right, Bob Ciccarello back with Tito Raymond and Brian, our subject at hand. We were at the five and six week mark. We're going to get Brian on the scale, see how we did. What are you thinking, bro? You spectacular first one and two week results. Can you match it again? I think I've, I've come down. I can definitely see a difference, but uh, we'll see. Let's get All on right, the scale. Let's get him let's on. See. So let's see, Tito. We'll start out with about, I'm just going by a rough number, 218 or? 218 to yeah. 199. To 199, and we're just at the beginning of five, six weeks. So basically in a month's time, 20 pounds. he's oh, dropped almost 20 yeah, pounds. Yeah. So hey, somebody's man. been doing their homework. I've been doing my homework. Dieting, <laughs> cardio, and lifting. That's, that's what it takes. You know, the scale is one thing. We need to get the measurements, and obviously the calipers going. I'm sure you didn't forget them. those. Oh, no. I got, them. Uh, I got the tape. Like a professional right. trainer. Tail of the tape. Let's get the measurements. We'll report back in a minute. Let's go. All right, Brian, another seven pounds off the scale, but that's only one half the battle. Uh oh. Tito's got the claw. Tito's got the claw. <laughs> so the claw is out, the tape measure is ready. But we don't want to unveil what he's looking like right now. We'll show him the snapshot stuff, but we don't want to give away too much right now. So we'll catch you after. that he should be making and uh, we're right on schedule. All right, but the numbers look good, so the numbers look great. we'll let you compute those, get those going. You need to get a myoplex down the hatch, buddy. I know, I survived the claw. All right, let's get a myoplex in and let's get some training going on. Time to pump some wire. Let's go. Back at the round table, yeah. training is in the books, got you on the scale, we've seen the measurements, we'll have those stats up ready for you guys to look at, and I'm uh, sure those are going to be reflective of the weight loss, he's had another seven pounds down, Brian, so yeah. congratulations buddy, Thank another you. good work. Thank you. Uh, Tito, I know you got some changes on the training, uh, what were those changes? Well, we increased uh, volume a little bit, added an exercise and, um, and extra sets, but starting to really push the weights and, you know, pushing his strength, so... He's only doing 10 to 12 reps now instead of 10 to 15, or 12 to 15 that he was in the past. Tito, for those following this out there and trying to do your own training regimen, um, basically you got a, a basic set of three sets, 10 to 12 repetitions. If that's light, should they just increase the weight or should they throw some extra sets onto there? I would, uh, I would, I would increase the weight, you know, and stick with it. We really want to try to push the strength so we can start really building the muscle. Okay. And uh, increase the weight, you know, if, you, if you're not getting 10 reps, then the weight's too heavy. Sure. Okay, if you're getting over 12, then it's too light. 
obviously this is a general program for you to follow out there. Again, trying to keep up with Brian is not going to be the easiest thing. Uh, but you have to really tailor it to your own needs. I mean, whether sure. you're stronger in particular exercises or you need a little bit more cardio or, or that type of thing, right. you, you really have to be able to tailor it to your own needs. Right. If you, if you want to gain weight you know, and put on size, you don't want to be doing sur uh, supersets or, I mean, circuit training in between exercises. But, you know, Brian's goal is to drop the weight and get leaner. So in between, we're going to try to keep him in that fat burning um, phase and, and, and keep his heart rate up. And the reason why I want to bring this up, Tito, is this is a transformation challenge. Um, there's all kinds of different transformations. Sure. Similarly, like Brian, obviously, you want to, to lose some weight. You want to get a little bit of muscle. Other people want to gain weight, sure. let's say. You can be a, a girl out there following this just the same. And obviously, for a lot of the girls out there, they don't want to get big and muscular. So again, you have to take this as a, as a basic, general outline and tailor it to your own specific needs. Exactly. All right. Well, we're looking down cardio and increase, Brian. I know you're a big Definitely. cardio freak. Yep. Uh, it looks like we got that up to at least three evening sessions, and I know if you can get more in, also a good idea, you know. Yeah, yeah he's getting more into. He knows that's what he needs, and so that's what he's doing. Yeah. And um, you know, it says 30 minutes. You know, if you can do more, do more. You know, I say at least an hour. You know, three to five days a week. But obviously, this is set so that if you're just a beginner starting out, you know, to ease you into it. But Brian knows, and he's been there before, and so he's he's jumped right ahead. He's already been doing, you know, over an hour, so. Yeah. Well, Tito, when you say an hour, is that an hour straight? Can it can be broken up into two 30-minute sessions? It, it, it's, again, it depends on the individual. You know, if you can handle an hour straight, do an hour straight. If you can't handle an hour straight, you do 30 minutes on something, 30 minutes on something else. Um, Best two times to do cardio. I know one tried and true. First thing out of the bed in the morning, empty stomach. Sure. What's the second one? At the end. At the end of the day. End of the day. End of the day. And, then, you know, at the end of the day, some people get all, get all wound up so they can't fall asleep. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you're one of those individuals, then you want to do it a little bit earlier then. Right. I, do, I do it first thing in the morning. I'm not a morning person. If I had my way, I sleep till 12 or yeah, 1 right. o'clock every day. But I get up every morning before work. I come in here, I do my cardio to get it over with. Um, most people are working people or they go to school or whatnot. So you really have to be able to get these workouts in when you can get them in. And same thing with the cardio. Um, almost anybody can get up a little bit earlier and get that first one. It's the second one that gets a little tough. You got kids at home, obviously you got job, you know, uh, or two jobs, that type of thing. Um, so really, just get it in when you can get it in. When you can do it. Yeah. You know, bottom line is get it done. Yeah, You're one, done. No, one, exactly. One last thing is that if you do your cardio first thing in the morning or lift in the morning, I promise you all day long you will eat healthy because you've already done the work in the morning. You will not sure. want to cheat or eat unhealthy. So I suggest doing cardio first thing in the morning and it will keep you focused and, you know, on schedule. Well, also raises the metabolism for the rest of the day, oh, yeah. isn't that right, Tito? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to do it on empty stomach so that you're, you're burning calories that are stored versus doing it after you've already eaten and burning the calories that you've just taken in. Carbohydrates, speaking of which, uh, you mentioned food and, and intake and, and when to do cardio in relation to it. Uh, carbohydrates present only in the first three meals. The basic trend I'm seeing, Tito, of course, again, old school bodybuilding, you want to keep the carbs low. Right. And, you know, 
this format is showing it, that it's a, a progressive to decreasing the carbohydrates. And if you can handle it earlier in the program, then do it. Because the bottom line is calories in and calories out. And if you're taking those extra carbs, then you're going to have to do a little bit more cardio. And, uh, you know, Brian's serious, so he's already dedicated and, and, and cutting out his carbs. Right. Brian, how's that been going? Now, uh, that's always a tricky part, because obviously right. your body craves Definitely. carbohydrates and sugars. Yeah. And obviously you don't have a whole lot of that coming in right now. How uh, are you dealing with I'm it? I'm not going to lie. There are nights where I'm hungry. What I do is I'll have some peanut butter, just like a teaspoon of like natural peanut butter or almond butter. It helps work through the craving. Sure. Um, last night, I cut carbs early. I was starving. <laughs> so what I did was, this sounds stupid, but drink a lot of water, crystal light or something like that. Have some gum and it kind of, you know, gets rid sure. of the hunger feeling. When you wake up the next day and you know that you didn't have carbs and you didn't cheat at night, you will feel a lot better. Now, Tito, obviously we come from a bodybuilding background. Uh, just because you're cutting carbs does not necessarily mean you have to cut meals. I know that's a huge mistake a lot of people are going to make out there. Do not eat twice or three times a day. You can cut the carbs down, but the protein meals can stay in. You can sure. still eat six, even seven times a day. Yeah, and uh, on top of it, it's like you're cutting out like the starchy carbs, the high dense carbs. We can substitute that with vegetables, which are lower mm -hmm. calories, but still carbohydrates. And, and occupy space in the stomach so that you're not feeling empty and starving. Little Tito tip of the day, vegetables, fibrous carbs as we call them uh, from years back, but a great way to fill up space. Still get some carbohydrates in, but again, those dense carbs, what should you absolutely avoid at this point, Tito? Well, the starchy carbs, your breads, you know, your um, flour, sure. um, potatoes, you know, I, I, he's sticking pretty much to his vegetables and occasionally brown some rice. brown rice, some oatmeal, you know, as clean and pure carbohydrate as you can get. So very important, even more so, you've got to keep the food coming in. Again, to get a protein bar, but again, you have to plan for it, like Brian plans. He's a working man. He's got a regular job. He's got a wife and a baby at home. Um, you know, he doesn't have that kind of time, um, but he's careful enough to get those protein bars. If you don't have it with you, it's tough to eat it, isn't it? And, and that's, guess what happens? People are out there, you're hungry, and what do you do? All of a sudden, that vending machine's calling your name over there. You know, and, and you know, well, you know, geez, Bob said it was something was better than nothing. It's yeah. like, oh, wait a minute now, hang on. Yeah, I didn't say a Snickers bar was better. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, don't take us too literally, but plan ahead. Planning is the key. If you can make those meals, if you have the luxury of bringing them to work or your schooling or, or wherever you're at, great. If you can't, just like Brian does, throw a couple bars in the bag, at least you're prepared. Yeah. Okay, Brian, motivation, one of the biggest factors when it comes to any kind of program, let alone a, a transformation one, where you're coming from A down to B. Um, obviously, your motivation right at start was merely to get in better shape. Yes. Um, when you're looking at specific targets to motivate, um, clothes have yes. got to be one. How are the clothes fitting now? Are you starting to see some differences? They're fitting a lot looser. My belt is on the last one now, you know, way tight. I'm gonna have to probably start buying new clothes soon or get back into my skinny pants. I don't think I kept them around though. I think I got rid of everything. It's been a while since I was down. Sure. Know? And we kind of joke about it, but you know, I mean, motivation wise, clothes can be a very good factor because 
I don't care what the tape measure says or the scale, because sometimes the scale's a little tricky, you know how that goes. Sure. Guy's more pred uh, predisposed to put on muscle, right. you may not see that weight coming off on the scale, but the clothes never lie. And right. the, you know how, especially something like jeans, you know how they fit. Yeah, and I, and I think also that you, he's, lo he's looking good in his clothes, so he feels good. You know, another thing, and if he's feeling good and he's looking good, it makes you me know. push that much harder when I get in here, you know? That's right, and, and, and I'm sure your wife has been noticing a difference. Yeah. And uh, She can put her arms all the way around me now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe her arms just got longer. Yeah, I think so. You don't know. It's well, let's measure her arms. Now. we got to get Brian's <laughs> wife in there. But, um, you know, there's a few, obviously, uh, many different ways to chart your progress. And finally, Tito, feedback from others. And, and uh, Brian, obviously, I mean, you see people all the time. Yes. You'll probably get better feedback, not from people you see every single day, but from people you bump into every once in a while. Sure. And I'm sure you've had some of that, some family in town maybe for the uh, holidays. Uh, are they seeing the differences? Definitely. I mean, my wife, who I'm with every day, has definitely seen a difference. So, you know, uh, coming into the gym, random people are like, telling me I'm looking leaner. So I kind of like that going into a gym to work out. Some people, We'll work out at home, you know, jog sure. outside. Coming into the gym is really motivating. First of all, you get energy at a gym with everybody lifting, you know. But just people, random people you see will be like, hey, man, you're looking lean. Sure. That's motivating. Here, how about this for motivation? How about emails from all over the country oh, yeah. of people watching this series? Yeah. All of a sudden, Brian's a superstar. He called me the other day. He says, I got all these emails coming in. I don't even know. You know, they're asking me all kinds of questions. Yeah, and I got to push them. Of course, I told, I told him, I said, hey, send them over to Tito. Yes. You know what I mean? But... Yes. That's got to be motivating to you. You've got people from literally all over the country, the world actually, yeah. as we're on the World Wide Web, right. watching this series and watching you. So yeah. the, the motivation quote or, or slash fear factor has got to be huge. Well, I, you know, hopefully I just can motivate people, you know. I've always been the type of person that when I put my mind to something, I know I can do it. And hopefully that helps out other people. You know? All right. Well, guess what? Weeks five and six coming up. Brian, keep doing what you're doing, Thank buddy. You. I want to see, uh, where, can he be, where can we expect to see Brian uh, next time around? We're going to see him in two weeks. We're going to get back on that scale just under the 200-pound camper now at 199. Where do you think he'll be in two weeks, Tito? Well, I think that now he's going to probably start slowing down a little bit, and um, we're going to hopefully uh, add some things into the routine, uh, bump up his cardio so that he continues making the same kind of progress. But uh, I would like to see him down another five, six pounds at least. You know, that's on the low end. And on, a, on the high end, another 10 pounds. Now, we should know, Brian's progress has been extraordinary. Um, but very patternized as to what most people should be seeing. So you may not have seen a 13-pound loss and then followed by a 7-pound loss. But you may have seen, let's say, let's cut it in half, a 7-pound loss followed by, you know, a 4 or 5-pound loss. So it's, it's not that uncommon that we would see um, progress slowing down at this point. Why is that? No, well, because his body's just getting acclimated to getting back into the training and routine. So initially, it's going to be a lot of water loss, and um, and then now we're going to stop. Really, the fat is stubborn, so we really got to push that out. Well, we'll see who wins that battle. I think I think Brian. I got the nod. I got my money's on him. Oh yeah. You know, fat may be stubborn, man, but this guy's tough. So. Keep doing what you're doing out there. Keep following the program. If you got any questions, you can email Brian right off of bodybuilding.com. Get a hold of Tito Raymond, super trainer. And for bodybuilding.com, I'm Bob Chicarello. We'll see you guys back in two weeks.